everybody welcome back to our youtube channel today i wanted to dig in a little bit into scenarios in a department there's been some conversation online about pediatrics and how to work with pediatrics as interpreters one of the things that may happen with interpreters from the get-go is that you think oh it's pediatrics so i need to be simplifying things and I wanna caution you against that. It's important to still follow your code of ethics and standards of practice, but not so much as the hard rules and things that you have to do, but really understanding the complexities and the whys behind it. In pediatrics, you can have a variety of contexts. It might be a well child check, it might be a triage, somebody has a cold or they're getting checked for strep throat. And then you could have something as complicated as oncology, genetics, different cardiology. So there's a lot of different areas that fall within the general context of pediatrics. But the first thing that you need to really remember is the complexity of the language and the register that somebody is speaking is what you have to interpret. It isn't your call as an interpreter to take a message, simplify it because you don't think the patient is gonna understand and do that type of conversion. It's really important that you stay faithful to the message, to the register, to the tone of the speaker. Because if the provider is speaking at a high register and the patient or the child doesn't understand, that's gonna come out because they're gonna say, what, or I don't understand. And then you send that back to the provider and the provider will make adjustments. So it's really important to let adults be adults and let the providers be in charge of their patient care. And if you keep with the register, eventually it's going to level out. So as interpreters, it's not our job to simplify or make more complex any idea that's being transmitted. People know a lot more about complex things than you might give them credit for. If you look at a St. Jude's commercial, you don't see the children saying, I have a boo-boo on my brain they're able to talk to you and explain what their condition is and what's going on. Shout out to St. Jude interpreters, they're amazing and they do wonderful work. The other thing is literacy doesn't equal intelligence. So somebody may not have a higher degree of education or come from a different background, but that doesn't equate to intelligence. So if you're working with a patient who you feel doesn't have the education level to understand the message, that isn't your call either it's important to let them work through things that are going on. The other thing to remember is that if somebody is in an appointment with a specialist, you're there for one moment in time. So it's not your job to say, oh, well, I've just met this person, they're not gonna understand the message, so now I'm gonna convert it and simplify it. That's not your role. You need to keep them faithful to the message. And kids aren't small adults, so you do have to look at the different complexities of having a little one in the room. So for example, there's the code of ethics and the rules, but if a child is being asked to perform and everybody claps afterwards and you don't clap as the interpreter, the child might respond to that and wonder what's going on and, and perform a little differently. So clapping isn't equivalent to not following your code of ethics. It's helping to be part of the treatment team. And we've talked about this in previous videos where you don't want to be off to the side in a lump in the room. You are there. You are a part of the context and the children are going to notice that you're there and in that environment. So you want to be careful not to be so removed as to not participate in some of the things going on. And so you might wonder, well, how do I know when to participate and when to not? So you wanna be part of the care team and take their lead, but you also wanna be as muted as possible. And so it's a fine balance here between what to engage in and what not to, but that's why understanding the code of ethics and the rules, but then really digging into critical thinking and applying that in a pediatric appointment is important. The other thing that you need to consider and the tool that you can use is your room positioning. So if a child wants to crawl up on your lap, stand up instead of sit down. If they're pulling at your ID badge, everybody in the room knows who you are, so take the ID badge and put it away. So using your room positioning skills is a great tool in the environment to be able to engage with the child, but also have that boundary. A lot of that's gonna depend on the age of the child. So you may have an infant, it could be a rambunctious two-year-old, you might have a scared eight-year-old, and you might have a 17-year-old who knows what's going on and all the barrier that they have is the language. Another complexity that could fall into pediatrics is an older child who does speak English. 
So when it comes to the exam time, the patient and the provider are gonna be able to be talking to one another because they understand the language. And this is where simultaneous skills can come in because you may have to be closer to the parent to be able to be simultaneously interpreting the interaction between the patient and the provider because that's where the language barrier stands. The other thing to remember is that you're interpreting not just for the adults. It's important to interpret everything. So if the doctor's examining the child and they say, oh, you're such a big boy, or oh, that was so good, or oh, you're so handsome, all of that matters. And so it's important as interpreters to interpret everything that's being said in the register. I had an appointment once where it was a three-year-old physical and so the doctor was talking to the, the child and saying to mom how, what a good boy they are. And it was very conversational, not medical communication that was happening. But I interpreted all of it as it was happening. And once the patient and the parent left, the provider looked at me and said, oh, it was so nice that you did that because I've never had that before. But it's so important to build a relationship with the child and with the parent. And all of that really matters. So again, keep in mind that as an interpreter, it isn't your job to decide what is or isn't said and how it is or isn't said. You need to be able to interpret everything at the right register and with the right tone. Finally, there are differences in expectation. So what you may be expected to do as a staff interpreter depends on the availability of information, it depends on the job description, it depends on what the restrictions are versus a vendor who might have different expectations because of liability, they may not have access to the training, and so there is a difference between what staff interpreter expectations might be and what vendor interpreter expectations might be. So it's really important to kind of weed that out and understand that. So in short, pediatrics doesn't mean that you don't do your job. It doesn't mean that you have to change and adjust everything. What it does mean is you need to let adults be adults and let a provider be in charge of their patient care and help them to communicate in the most effective way possible. So lots said here. If you have feedback on pediatrics, let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe. Share across social media if you find it relevant. Thanks for your time, guys, and have a great day.